Well, that was just a bit of noisy stuff that I saw one afternoon riding home, and this was another site that I saw one morning. Um, stormy day, out bright and early, and I had no idea that bridge was lit up after dark. Well, find out something new every day. Anyway, we're going to ride out on a route that I've been out on recently, but we're going to go a lot further, and all these rides uh, out this way seem to involve riding out past the Optus Stadium and the Mataranga Bridge. So it just seems to be an easy landmark to head for and uh, then you know take off south or west or whatever. West? East from there. And uh, so I've just gone past the stadium and we're heading... Uh, yeah, I've got to remember, it's the other way around over in WA. We're heading east. Um, and I'm going to show you the, the entire uh, route out fast forwarded just so you can see um, how much path there is versus how much road there is and how many crossings there are because I think this was about a 50k ride all up and I didn't even get to the end of the path which is you know pretty good and as you can see here nice wide path red asphalt lines down either side lines down the middle no lighting in this area uh, that's something I have noticed around the place that uh, some of these paths are well lit uh, and I mean really, really well lit, much better than some of the Sydney paths. Um, partly, I think, because they don't use solar lights, which tend to be a bit weaker. And, and the poles are fairly close together, so you don't have these uh, sections, you know, big sections of darkness separated by uh, you know, some lights. Uh, anyway, what we're doing is we've just gone over the Greatest Highway. We came out here the other day, and I, I got to this point and I thought, you see over there on the right, there's the, uh, the bike symbol. Um, there was no indication when I came out there the first time that this was a bike route, so I thought, well, let's just ride back up the road and see if there's any bike symbols on this section of the road. Is, is this a bike route? And I rode up and I looked over the hill and down the other side and there was absolutely nothing, and there was nothing along here either. And as we come around the corner, there is absolutely no indication that's a bike route there off to the right. So once again, it just shows you know, the, the poor uh, wayfinding signage that you tend to find. The only reason I knew this was here was, you know, there's another video I did going out with a mate of mine who showed me uh, this way. If it hadn't been for Rob, um, I never would have come out this way. Anyway, you, one thing you might notice going along here, the minimal minimal traffic, no traffic, uh, even though it's 8 o'clock in the morning and we've just gone past the train station. Oh, and I should have turned right here. This is, again, where the wayfinding breaks down. Um, no traffic, no, almost no cars parked on the road, and you know a red bike lane along here. Now, for those of you interested in AFL, off to the left here is the West Coast Eagles training ground, uh, and Rob told me about this. He pointed down here. He said there's a cafe down here, uh, and a training ground, etc. And it's a nice kind of place to go. So I thought I might um, pop down there, and well, you know, even if I was going the wrong way, might as well go and have a look. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll do a separate video on that because the urban planning in that area is quite interesting. Uh, let's go head back along the road and whoop, yep, off we go. Uh, sudden uh, right hand turn where there's a blind corner for cars coming around towards you. We're back onto a path. Uh, and, and again, no way finding there. Uh, we do have a couple of uh, road crossings to get across. Uh, you know, the cars also have to get across the railway lines to our, our right here, but never really had any uh, particular problems getting a, across these junctions. Now again you can see here we're back on the nice red asphalty stuff. It's it's a beautiful width, I guess it's a, a metre and a half either side. Um, some sections are interspersed with concrete for some reason, like this pink concrete section. Don't ask me why. I have absolutely no idea why they chop and change between bits of concrete there and uh, another bit of concrete and another bit of concrete and another bit of concrete um, and yep another bit of concrete but who knows why look the the thing is it's a pretty easy path to follow and it's just going and going and going and going so I think this is one of the advantages of building alongside a railway line where there's a fair amount of um, corridor uh, and you know you can see they've put uh, there's trees along uh, this, this path in certain areas to give it a little bit of shade Obviously, places like this, there's no place to put trees in. I'm glad it wasn't a particularly hot day. Uh, speaking of hot, I only went out with one water bottle, 
and the main reason I turned around was I couldn't find anywhere to fill the bottle up or any public toilets. Um, you know, I, I guess I could have pulled into a, a shop and bought a bottle of water, but yeah, I think it, I'd, uh, I'd either need to find sports grounds or playgrounds or something like that where there's water bubblers where I could fill up, um, or you know, stick another bottle in the backpack or stick a, a bladder in the backpack because where I turned around, you can't really see it, but off in the distance is uh, is the hills. It's um, the the Darling Ranges on the eastern uh, side of Perth, and I guess I probably could have ridden just about all the way out there if I'd had had some water. Um, now that does vary from suburb to suburb. You know, some suburbs you go through, I have found water bubblers on the side of, well, kind of on the side of the tracks, uh, the track the path um, and some I've had to you know I've looked at a playground and thought well there's a uh, there's a playground over there there's playground equipment I wonder if they've got a water bubbler over there and yes they they do so sometimes you can't get lucky uh, what are we in we're about seven minutes into it so far so we've probably gone about I don't know 15 kilometers at this stage and as you can see a good old red path shows no signs of stopping and you can see the path is in great condition there's no potholes there's no cracks it hasn't been repaired anywhere with uh, you know snakes of asphalt etc um, the crossings at the stations are generally pretty good you just go through the car park and yeah anyway that's where the path ended um, and I, I thought i would just slow this down a little bit because we, we just went past a school there and I thought yeah, that's pretty strange. You know, the, you'd think a school would be a good place to build a path to. I mean, it, it finishes at the station back there on the other side of a, a main road. There's a school right on the other side. Why not build a path? Now, if you have a look over on the right-hand side, you might see some cones occasionally. And we, when we uh, come back, we're going to have a look at that side more carefully because I didn't notice this on the way out. Um, but I have a sneaking suspicion they're actually in the process of constructing a path on uh, on that side of the road and um, we'll see it shortly but I just wanted to show you know another section of the road and you know again the main things there's no cars parked on the road there's no traffic on the road um, you know and we swing off onto yet another path uh, and as we come up over this rise onto this bridge, you might be able to see the hills in the distance. It's probably, I don't know, another another 20 kilometres, I suppose, to get out there. Um, I have no idea. I haven't looked it up. But uh, that's, I think, the Row Highway down below us. I stopped, took a photo, and um, you can see there's a path there on the left-hand side. This is where I got to, you know, a fair way out, and you can see all the green stuff on the right-hand side. That's uh, that's the hills. So yeah, probably halfway there. So did my U-turn, and one of those signs for that bike path said, uh, I think Fremantle, 23 kilometres. So the, obviously must have been a path heading towards Fremantle. Now this is when I noticed what looks suspicious like construction work on the left-hand side here, and. What you might see are some uh, stakes driven into the ground on a regular basis with a little bit of tape flapping off them. Uh, I think those are uh, surveying markers. And every now and then there's these cones and it looks like they're fiddling with the drainage. Um, and this is probably preparatory work before they get stuck in and actually start laying asphalt and concrete and stuff like that is uh, presumably relocating the drains or, or building some proper drains to well make sure it drains properly so it's not like that section of the bay run which has terrible drainage uh, and you can see they've kind of cleared a bit of a uh, a path along here so i thought well why don't why not jump over and have a look at it and yes it certainly looks wide enough for a, a bike path although a lot of those um Markers did say things like pipeline, etc. So there's there's an example of a marker there. Um, so I hope they're putting in a path. It, it would seem to make sense that this is a missing link in between, uh, you know, the section of the path going over the bridge and uh, the section on the other side of the school. And you can see there's you know, a couple of uh, new drain sections that we've gone past. And certainly a nice new smooth path would be much better than this rather well 
well, well repaired, often repaired road, I think uh, is what you'd call it. Now, one thing I did notice though is when we get up to the school, the, um, the, the, the path preparation works, I guess you'd call it, kind of stopped. So there's suddenly uh, you know, no more surveying markers and uh, um, the, the clearing of trees and shrubbery and grass, etc. didn't seem to be as apparent. And I have this sneaking suspicion they might not be building the path along here, possibly because of what's over there on the left. And if you look closely at what's over on the left, it's angled parking. Now, uh, this road is plenty wide and the parking is very deep. I would have thought they'd just be able to move the parking out somewhat and, uh, and run a path along the edge. Uh, you know, maybe the, they proposed putting a path along here, but it was going to disrupt parking or remove some parking spaces and, you know, the usual sp suspect screamed uh, blue murder. Although, you know, like I said, you'd think it would make uh, a lot of sense to build a bike path to a school so more kids could ride safely pretty much right to the doorstep of the school. Because you, know, you, you can ride through that train station car park and uh, along the path there, and once you get across this road at the end here, the uh, uh, the separated bike path restarts. Although, you know, would I really be wanting to uh, send school kids across that particular crossing? Um, no, probably not. I think you'd, you'd want to upgrade that to something a little bit better. Uh, anyway, that's you know about a 50k round trip out there on that path learned some lessons had a good look at what's there and perhaps what's coming uh, and so the, the question of do the suburbs away from uh, the beaches have decent bike infrastructure and i think the answer is yes uh, although having had a bit of a chat with some locals that t tends to depend very much on the council uh, Someone said that you know the city of Vincent, for instance, gone absolutely bonkers building bike paths, and others don't care. So uh, you, you've got that kind of mix. Anyway, uh, hope you learned something, and I'll have to go and ride this a bit further and see if uh, if I can get out to the hills. <laughs>